Welcome back to the OmniPeak channel. My name is Chris Bloom, and this is where we talk about all of the exciting things you can do with OmniPeak. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the Live Wire Edge. Because with OmniPeak, you can, of course, capture traffic locally, Ethernet traffic, wireless traffic, traffic from APs, load just about every kind of packet file you can think of, but you can also connect to our live wire appliances with OmniPeak. This is the Live Wire Edge. It is the smallest in our family of live wire appliances, but it is very powerful. You can see here, we've got a couple of bridge ports, so this little guy can go in line on your network. We also have three span port so you can span from your routers and switches directly into this box it in line can just go between a cable modem and a router and throw in a closet because it has no moving parts there's an ssd in here there is no fan uh, it makes no noise so just connect it either to span ports or a uh, in line and forget about it and then you can connect to it from OmniPeak from anywhere so you can buy a bunch of these you can put them all throughout your retail stores your warehouses your offices your hospitals your banks uh, in places where you don't have good network visibility and you need that especially in today's world where you don't have IT people at all of those locations so Let's get right to it. Here we are in OmniPeak. First thing we're gonna do is from the start page, we're gonna hit the View Capture Engines button. That will bring up a tab. We're gonna go ahead and add this new live wire that I was just showing you a minute ago and I have hooked up in my home office, actually between the wall and my home computer in line so we'll connect to that and the first thing you're going to see when you connect to a live wire is the home page this will show you a bit of information about the live wire edge probably the most important thing is how much storage you have on it and like i was saying before the live wire edge has a one terabyte uh, SSD on it. Uh, you know, after we load the operating system and all that wonderful stuff, you end up with a little bit over 800 gigabytes in order to save packets on. So let's go to our captures tab. I've already got a capture running here, but we can have any number of captures. I'm going to create a new monitoring capture. I'm going to go to the adapters. And since I know I'm capturing on the bridge, we're going to go ahead and select that. As you can see, I have other span ports I could have connected to as well. Uh, and I'm going to select my analysis. I've already got it all enabled. In this case, I'm trying to show you how you can connect to an edge really quickly, start a capture, and just see the analysis and the packets as quickly as possible. And there we go. We are now capturing. Here's some packets. As I've mentioned numerous times, not the first thing I want to look at when I am troubleshooting a network because uh, there's just a lot of packets and I want to see probably first what the utilization is. Of course, this is my home computer, not a whole lot going on here, but got some traffic. So let's work our way through the different views. Now, in a previous video, I went through most of these views, so I won't go over them in excruciating detail here, but just want to really point out that when you are working with a live wire, whether it's a live wire edge or one of our larger appliances that can do, you know, over 40 gigabits per second or even live wire virtual, most of the views are identical to the views that you would be looking at if you were capturing locally um, using a laptop or even capturing wireless. So we've worked really hard to make it the same interface. And the fourth dashboard is the compass dashboard. With compass, you've got all kinds of statistics being displayed at the same time. You've got utilization, you've got your protocols, your nodes. I have a number of other types of data sources that I could choose from. 
like flows and applications. The reason why this is so powerful in Compass is not only are they displayed at the same time in the Compass dashboard, you can select any one of these items from the different widgets down below the main graph, whether it's protocols or nodes or down below. I had added the flows and the applications. So those all get graphed into this, this graph at the top at the same time. So they're all overlaid, maybe be a little bit easier to see it. If I go lines, you can see these uh, different statistics and very interactive. You can select ranges of time. You can move the range around. Uh, this is utilization. And if we go up here, we can also see latency, which will break that response time or separate it into application latency and network latency. So you can see here that average app latency is the blue and you can see in the graph all of the latency that we have is blue and you can see it's anywhere from two seconds all the way up to eight seconds uh, and when i went into this latency mode all of the widgets below they also changed to latency mode so now you can see very clearly that https uh, has the highest latency from a protocol point of view and if I scroll down, let's look at the applications. We've got some SSL applications with uh, some high application latency. You can see at all over all of the network latencies, very low, all sub second, uh, sub, uh, yeah, sub second uh, millisecond latencies, 50 milliseconds, 44 milliseconds. This is what we would expect for network latency, and it's usually the case. And for some of these, uh, it's just very low or or nothing. <laughs> no network latency. That's what you want to see. Okay, so if I turn off temporarily the app latency, then this graph scales up so we can at least see in the graph what the network latency looks like. You know, here's a little burst of it. You can see I can zoom in on that, get a closer look, and still you know, we're under a second. So from here, if I saw something I wanted to drill down on, like maybe this HTTPS, I can click it here. It's going to get graphed. I can then do a select related and it will take me to, since we're going to go to the packets anyway, it'll take me to the packets for the range of time I selected in Compass and whatever I had selected, that creates a filter. So I just filtered on HTTPS and that range of time. And from here, I can just highlight the packets or copy them to a new window, which I'm doing now. So I leave the original alone and I now have a selection of just the HTTPS in this new window and i can go ahead and take a look at that if you go to protocols you can see there it's just the https if i go back to compass it's just the the https and in fact now that we've done this let's select this even smaller range of time and the ability to zoom into milliseconds feature becomes enabled and we can hit the plus button and we've now zoomed in so we can really tell uh, exactly where the latency occurred because in networks a lot can happen in a second so now we've drilled down to 10 milliseconds i see some latency there i want to look at and i'm going to drill down again and we're going to go all the way to one millisecond so we've really drilled down and from there you know i could go ahead select that range of time and I could do another select related. So I'm really working my way down from, you know, high level latency, zooming into a, a, just a couple of milliseconds, and then I can look at the packets from there. So I can go ahead and, and boom. And guess what? There's one packet. Uh, so that is some pretty powerful workflow. Speaking of powerful workflow and flows, let's go from Compass 
straight on over to the flows, but let's do it in our primary capture. Remember, this is the real-time capture. That other capture was a selection we had made. So we're going to go to flows here because uh, what we want to look at is a couple of things. One is what kind of events have we generated based on the, the traffic that's getting captured? Uh, because it can tell us a lot about the problems on the network. There are 200 some odd e expert system diagnoses in OmniPeak, whether you're capturing locally or capturing on the engine. And so for example, you know, I'm usually worried about response time. So I've got 36 different events for response time. And as you can see, when I click around on these events, they're highlighted, so I can go, whoops, slow response time. Well, once again, I can select related packets, and in OmniPeak, that's an important workflow feature is no matter where you are in the program, whatever the high-level analysis is, you can always select related packets to get to the individual packets. So I could do that here to go to the packets, but uh, that's probably not the first thing I would do. I think what I would do uh, before I look at packets is go to one of these flows. Here's a flow. Uh, go to the top. I'm going to bring up average application latency and average network latency. So now for this flow, I can see, let's see, average application latency for this is 14 seconds. Wow. Uh, that's pretty painful. And, oh, oh, that's, that's SSL, which uh, may very well be HTTPS. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We've got 226 packets from here. Uh, I'm going to select related packets by flow ID, copy those to a new window. And by doing that, it enables another very powerful feature in OmniPeak. Uh, as well as in Livewire Edge, known as, or any Livewire, let's go back to flows, known as the flow visualizer. So we're going to uh, go to that flow where we had slow response time, and we're going to take a look at the flow visualizer, which is a ladder diagram showing us the client server transactions. You can see here's a bunch of acts going back and forth. We had a, well, we got the Let's see, the client makes a request. We get an act back very quickly. Then you can see these big gaps where we had a request go out. And then we had an act come back very quickly. There's our delta time, less than a second. And then we had this long delay uh, for 15 seconds before we got the response back from the server. That's not good. So... Let's go take a look at that. We're going to go to the packet. Here we are. Now I'm ready to look at packets because I just basically found a needle in a haystack. So now I'm looking at uh, that packet that showed a slow server response time. Well, here's the request for it. And then here is the response. So these are the two packets. So if I were troubleshooting this, uh, there's lots of, you know, views along the way that I could take screenshots of to prove that it was application latency and not network latency. And then I could provide the, even the packet file uh, to the service provider or the application, uh, you know, developer and not just prove to them that it's the application, but give them information to help them solve the problem. So, you know, there's lots of workflows in flows, but let's move on. Uh, let's go take a look at the peer map over in, whoop, uh, so peer map. Now, keep in mind, all of this analysis that we're doing is happening on the edge. So I can be looking at this analysis from my OmniPeak, Colleagues could also have OmniPeak. They could be looking at the exact same analysis at the same time. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching the OmniPeak channel. If you have more questions about OmniPeak, please visit our website at liveaction.com. We've got blogs, we've got videos, we've got product specifications, 
all kinds of great stuff out there. So until next time, keep your network safe and fast. Talk to you soon. Bye.